All right, so uh, thank you very much for coming and introducing yourself and sharing this time with us. We'd like to now welcome our lecturer, who's probably going to tell us a little bit about himself, okay. Mr. Ashley Cross. Is it Wait or Wait? Wait. How do Wait. you pronounce it? Wait. Wait. Like that. Okay, <laughs> Ashley Cross Wait. Big hand for our lecturer, <laughs> Ashley Cross Wait. You got your own. Wow. I want to get my electric guitar, you know. Dang, dun, dun, dun. I'm going to show a movie about, oh gosh, that's still a bit loud, isn't it? And he's bronze, the expert, he's working on it. Well, it's, I, it's just incredible hearing all of you already. Uh, it's hard not to start crying right away, that's my feeling, because some of you I worked with in different uh, times. With Larry, I mean, we were partners in crime, <laughs> in Russia. Yeah. That's fairly recently, that's only 20 years ago, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Quite recently. What about Steve and Roseanne? That was about 35 years ago, right? <laughs> At least. <laughs> At least. I mean, it's just so incredible to see each other. How did you keep so young? And uh, how did I keep so young? Well, that's very kind, you know, you don't see me in the mirror early in the morning, <laughs> struggling to make it to him okay and all that. Uh, our lives are just so incredible. We're brought together by two parents, right? And uh, we truly, their love is reverber reverberating around the world in such an incredible way. And they're bringing all of us together. And uh, just to see Deloise with her wonderful poor husband. <laughs> <laughs> I used to live with your wife, you know. <laughs> you should be jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Old flame from the past. You know? <laughs> no, we were pioneers at San Francisco State University. We were cut pioneers. <laughs> With, with Tiger Park, or even before Tiger Park joined Carp, actually. And uh, so many memories from that time, such an incredible time, actually. We used to go up to the holy ground at Twin Peaks and stay all night sometimes, and just have incredible experiences with God. And Deloise was my older sister, and she taught me so much, actually. It's just amazing to see you. Uh, anyway. And look at this guy Drew, man, he's, he's you know. <laughs> anyway, it's just uh, really good to see you, and even those of us who don't know each other, um, I'm sure we'll get to know each other well this weekend. And uh, experience what God is all about as a family. Because to me, uh, the divine principle is not a theory, and it's not just words or uh, and certainly not just a uh, philosophy but it's, it's our life it's our life as a family and as a community of brothers and sisters uh, last weekend I did a workshop a healing a personal development workshop we were working with something called family constellations is a type of therapy healing the family, and uh, my wife and I work a lot with the Emotion Code, we work with Dr. Bradley Nelson, who's trained us up to do that work, and I do also body talk, which is another type of therapy, so that's what we do, and we work with the Blessed Family Department in Europe, and in the UK. I also have a gardening business, uh, because I have a passion for gardening. I had been away from my home country for 20 years and we went back really to take care of my parents who were getting quite ill. So we, we left Russia in 1995 and we went back to England and uh, I became the gardener at St. Paul's Cathedral. Do you know where St. Paul's Cathedral is? In London. 
and I was the Bishop of London's gardener. He's the one that gave a sermon at the royal wedding the other day. Great friend of mine. And did you see the royal wedding, some of you? No way. <laughs> no way. I was hoping somebody would say that. No way. You don't even know what cricket is here, do you? You have no idea. Even though there's, you know, about 800 million Indians that play cricket. You know. <laughs> anyway, I'm just kidding. But there was a moment in the ceremony when the bride and groom were at the front of the cathedral. They brought the garden into the cathedral, those of you who saw it. It was quite amazing, actually. They brought all these trees in. So it was like a, a wedding in a garden but inside the Westminster Abbey. And there was a moment when the uh, dean of the abbey, right at the end of the ceremony, he wrapped a cloth around the, the bride and groom's hands. Some of you saw that, right? And he quoted one sentence from Jesus. And that was, what God has joined, let no man separate or went asunder. Right? And uh, at that point, my wife and I were just weeping. You know? <laughs> because that is really divine principle, what divine principle is really about. Mm. It's about you know, one man and one woman and starting a new, a new life, you know, a new lineage, a, a new world. You know. So what God has joined, no man should rent asunder. Right? If we understand that, we actually understand <laughs> what the principle is about. Right? It's so very precious. The equality of man and woman. You know, in Osama bin Laden, he had 17 stepmothers, I think, and 51 siblings. Did you know that? I read a psychological profile of his once. I think it was probably quite messed up, his family, don't you think so? You know, so many times we take for granted what we have. Isn't it here? I work a lot in Africa. That's my other mission. I also do IRFF. And uh, we, I work with two schools in Zambia and in Uganda. And I work with Africa Wait. You've probably heard of Wait from Washington, D.C., right? But uh, it's really developing a lot in Africa these days. And uh, we have about 2,000 Wait members in Uganda. And. Uh, and so the, the kids at the high schools, they can really uh, pick up the principle through weight. Because what is weight? Weight is the commandment, actually, right? It means, so all the kids in Uganda, they have a weight t-shirt. They have to have fulfilled the Ten Commandments. There's Ten Commandments in order to become a weight member, <laughs> right? There's no snogging, no girlfriend, boyfriend, no drink, no drugs like this, you know, and uh, healthy lifestyle, etc. Anyway, I won't bore you with all the details of the Ten Commandments. You probably know them already. You should be, you should be the ones teaching, actually, not me. But anyway, they, they have a t-shirt. On the front it says, wait. And on the back it says, do you know what it says? Maybe some of you know. It says, you're worth waiting for, and so am I. Yeah? You're worth waiting for, and so am I. Uh, I was reading some stuff with Mark Gungas the other day. He was talking about how people who have many relationships before they're married, it's like a little part of their heart is just given away each time they have a relationship. So like when a person has a sexual relationship, it's not just a physical thing, right? We know that. I'm sure you all know that as children of two parents. And there's an emotional connection is made. And a part of our heart is given to that person. And there are spiritual elements that are shared between those two people. And so the more people indulge in free sex, the more they destroy their ability to love their true lifetime partner. There's, there's plenty of research about it. It's been proven, basically. Right? So God is working in so many ways to teach the principle to everybody. 
You know the, the, the word I hate the most? So just to give you fair warning, right? Is the word member. People in Germany, they use that word a lot. <laughs> who is a member and who is not a member? <laughs> you think, wait a minute, what are we talking about members here? You, know? you get confused. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> Roseanne got it. <laughs> Roseanne got the joke. Anyway, you have to be very quick to get this strange British humour. <laughs> Even though I am Californian, actually, I joined the church in California. My spiritual father is Josh Carter, and I was living in Vancouver Island just before I joined. So I'm, I feel like coming here and meeting your community for the first time is like coming home for me. I actually lived in an Indian village in, in Vancouver Island near Tofino. Some of you know where that is. And uh, they taught me so much, those people, just before I joined our two parents' family. And uh, they gave me a book, actually. It was called the, the Warriors of the Rainbow. I don't think it's even in print anymore. But in the book, I mean, God just prepared me so much because this tribe, they had through their spiritual communication, they knew that when Jesus came again, it wouldn't be the same Jesus. And they explained that John the Baptist was Elijah. You know, they explained all these things to me. And yet they were not belonging to any church or any particular faith, this tribe, but they knew all these things. And so who are the warriors of the rainbow? It's you, actually. The people of all faiths, all backgrounds, who would come when the Messiah comes again and break down all the walls, all the barriers, and become God's family. So let's not talk about members, but brothers and sisters. And uh, realize that everyone in this whole world is my brother and sister. Even if they don't realize it yet. It just means they haven't figured it out yet in an intellectual way or they haven't had some kind of spiritual awakening maybe quite yet, but they are already my brother and sister. We shouldn't have a concept that limits us. Otherwise we can't really uh, change this world. So once everybody is here tomorrow morning, we'll have a ceremony, right? It's called the water ceremony, and it's what True Father is doing on his world tour. Maybe you've seen it, some of you, on the internet. But uh, before Father comes up to speak, there are certain uh, religious leaders come from five or six different traditions, and they pour water from uh, however many religions are represented from cups into a bowl, right? And then we read, two days ago, on the 11th, Dr. Walsh read from Father's autobiography. Very simple passage about how each religion is like a stream right, flowing into the great river and going towards the same destination. So Father's view is totally universal. He's not concerned about Unification Church or who's a member, who isn't a member. He's concerned about world peace, world unification. That's all he's concerned about. So that water ceremony is very profound, actually. It's showing that the Messiah comes for all people to be reunited. So the worries of the rainbow, that's the meaning of people of all faiths and all colors who come together to create the family of God, restore the family of God. And that's who you are. That's why looking out at your faces, for me, is just so beautiful, actually, to see you. And I can imagine some of your stories are so difficult. I can imagine. Some of you have seven children, four children, but we should always be very sensitive as blessed families. I know brothers and sisters who have no children, couldn't have children. 